What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna start off doing something a little different, a little more than just painting here. So, I've got the neon back in the shop. Um, I've got everything laid out. Not everything, most of everything. So, it's gonna be kind of a multi-video multi process going on here because I don't have everything I need to complete what I'm about to do. So, um, first things first, we're gonna go over everything as far as parts that I have right now for it. And we're gonna go through the process of where to start, where to begin. Um, if you guys are doing this at home, walk you through it a little bit. It's really not that difficult. Um, we're going to be swapping turbo setups again. I know I've went through this once doing a just a turbo swap itself on a log manifold which is a big bigger turbo upgrade from the factory um, and three turbo it's obviously a lot smaller than what I've got on here now but it is exactly the way it looks now is how the factory is um, besides obviously the wastegate and everything like that but the factory turbo it sits right there along with the big turbo if you have like a log manifold um, set up this is the way that looks and we're going to be doing a custom sidewinder turbo kit on this that I bought so the term sidewinder is because not it it pretty much replaces where the location of the turbo is instead of it being crunched in the back which the factory turbo is a lot harder to work on these cars than the big turbo once you go big turbo it makes it a little bit easier to work on these cars because you're getting rid of some stuff, relocating it. And with the bigger turbo, there's less involved as far as, you know, you can swap out a turbo easier. It's just the way the factory turbo is and the heat shields and all that stuff that comes factory on these cars, it's a pain to deal with it. And the O2 pipe that runs underneath the car is a four bolt. So it's really hard to get to those bolts and get the turbo in and out if you need to ever swap parts or swap manifolds or anything like that. It's just a pain. So once you go big turbo on these cars, it's, it makes it a lot easier to work on. So um, I've done this millions of times, it seems like. I mean, if you haven't watched my last video from when we went from the 50 trim to this 5757 double ball bearing turbo, go back and watch it to watch how you actually replace a turbo on one of these log manifold factory setups. Um, so the Sidewinder, like I said, it relocates it going from the back of the car to right here where the battery is. So not only do you have to replumb some things such as your heater core lines, because your heater core lines actually go behind this where this filter is. Um, so not only do you have to relocate some of those lines, a lot of guys, they just actually disconnect them underneath the manifold because all these lines that on the side of the vehicle, on the motor right here, these are pretty much all water lines. So a lot of guys just plug it off underneath the manifold and don't worry about having heat or anything like that going to your heater core, um, which is fine if you don't daily your car, but I'm gonna try to keep all that stuff. So some of that stuff we gotta relocate, and also we gotta relocate this battery. 90% of the people that I know that do it, they put it in the trunk, which is fine, but I'm gonna do it in the back seat um, on the floorboard. I think is that's where I'm gonna go with this. Um, the trunk, it, it's okay, but if you ever lock your keys or your car doesn't, you know, it, it dies or anything like that, it's much harder to get in the trunk because I have a carbon fiber trunk on this with no keyhole. So it is a much harder to get inside the car than it is to pop open the door. Um, so I'm going to do it behind. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to first do. Um, I've got a whole kit for... Um, the battery for this so it's not hard to do you pretty much are just extending your negative and positive um, lines all the way back towards the car you can buy them individually there's websites out there that actually sell them as a kit um, things like that so and we also got to delete this battery tray because it's going to be in the way because literally everything sits right here and this kit is a custom one-off um, kit um, you can buy the manifolds for these all day long, but everything else as far as your dump pipes, your dump tubes, O2 housings, um, your intercooler pipes, the intercooler itself, all has to be pretty much made. 
Um, obviously, I mean, you can buy an aftermarket big front mount like I've got already on this and be fine with it. But the way this kit, I bought it used, like I said, and it was made for everything to go together with it because it has vibrant clamps on it. So vibrant clamps are pretty much like a V-band style clamp. Um, flanges are pretty much V-band. It's got like a rubber O2 kind of seal right here that goes inside of them. Um, really cool, really easy to work on stuff. But once you go this route as far as buying this and having it welded, you pretty much have to keep everything together because even the... The intercooler itself is welded on with V-band clamps with the vibrant. I mean, one side's vibrant, one side's just a V-band. I don't know why they didn't do that, but probably because these things are expensive. All every one of these, one set of these vibrant clamps is like 130 bucks. So this person spent a lot of money making everything vibrant clamped. So we have everything in here as far as wastegate. It's a big wastegate. Um, it's V-band as well. All the um, lines for your dump tube oil, feed line for the turbo. We got a brand new turbo going on in there. So this is a 6262 Precision. Um, I've got the compressor housing off of it because this whole thing, it was just the car, the shape that the car when I first bought this was just pretty much trashed. Even the engine bay was just trashed. This person pretty much was making a drag car or sleeper car. The car was trashed. The only thing that was really high end in it was the motor build and the turbo setup. And I got the turbo setup all the way from the intercooler to the turbo manifold and all that stuff. Um, so everything was just really dirty. Um, so I went ahead and sanded all the aluminum parts down. Um, like these pipes, that's why they look so new, which they weren't new before. They looked, they were really trash. I just can tell they were just beat up. Luckily this one goes underneath the car so you don't really see it. But I went through and I hand sanded all these parts, even the housing for the compressor um, on the turbo side of it. It was just factory. If you ever seen a factory dirty precision turbo, it just, it's nasty looking. So I, I just did a quick, it wasn't really quick. It took me a long time to get this thing sanded. And then I, I pretty much just polished it out a little bit with a buffer. And I'm gonna run it like this. It's not perfect but it is a 10 times better than what was on there. It cleaned everything up really well. Um, so when I go to build this, I don't have to do anything besides just keep it clean, put some polish on it, and we're good to go. So this was the old turbo that was on it when I did the big turbo swap. So this is the 50 trim, and then I went to that 5757 that's on the car now. So we gotta put all that stuff off and start going through this, relocate the battery. I even got a custom wiring harness that was also on the car. Um, so this harness is a connect harness and I'm not sure if they make more for other vehicles, if they just SRT or, you know, four cylinder platforms. I'm sure they make more than just one make a model, but it pretty much tucks your wiring engine harness underneath a lot of stuff. Everything's pretty much extended out. So all the wiring mess that you see from the factory cars, this pretty much gets rid of it. So this was really awesome that this was on the car. I wanted to get one anyways. So um, it having on the car and I can just pick up everything at once is really nice. And with kinetic harnesses, I didn't know, but they actually label every connector where it goes. Like if you got a watt box, this is where the watt box goes. Um, you know, this is the vehicle speed sensor. So everything's labeled so you really can't mess this up as far as where, to, where everything goes. So this one goes like to the battery or the fuse box probably. This is where it actually plugs into your factory harness, all this other stuff. So really cool actually. This goes in the PCM I believe. So, um, but yeah. We got a lot of things to do. I even picked up a new um, turbo blanket. Don't know anything about this company. I'm gonna see if it's actually any good. It was on the cheaper side of things, so I don't expect it to last very long. It was like 
40, 50 bucks ship, I think. So I don't expect it to last very long on this setup um, because this does get pretty hot for the location that it's at. Um, so we'll see. And another big thing that this setup does, not only does is it going to relocate the turbo um, on the side of the, the engine head, but it's in a, it's, it's not a hood dump, it's in a um, cow dump. So a lot of guys will do like hood dumps or fender dumps or whatever else. This car had these made for your cow. So everything, instead of the exhaust going underneath the car like it is now, it's gonna pretty much come through the cow panel like right here, maybe a little bit less right here. So the cow's gotta come off. We gotta drill holes once I get all that stuff situated, once I get the manifold on there. So there's a lot of custom parts and things that are going on with this car or this uh, turbo setup. That's gonna take a little bit of time to kind of get it all together and figure out where it goes. Luckily, this is my second Sidewinder turbo kit I've done on these cars. That's why I know how or what needs to be extended and things like that I already know that all has to take place if you want to keep all that stuff because I'm trying to keep The heat AC all that stuff factory still in the car with just this custom Sidewinder kit you don't see these kits on these cars very often Usually the ones that have them are like show type of cars or you know, purposely drag raced only on purpose. So um, there's not many running around. So if you ever, if you have one of these cars and want something really unique, um, I believe my personal opinion in a few years, these cars are going to be hard to find anyways in good condition like mine is. Most of them are rusted out, beat up, you know, hacked, cut, hacked together. There's very little of them still alive running out there that are actually in really nice shape. Probably less than a hundred, I would say, running around that's in really good shape. So I, I figure in a few years, these cars by themselves to find a really clean, good driver, you know, whether it's stock or belt, it's going to be really hard to find. So my idea was I always wanted to do this kit again. This kit is a little bit cleaner than the kit that I had years ago. I did this like, I put one of these on my other cars like 10 years ago and it was a different kit, but it was still a Sidewinder. Everything was just routed differently. And this one is a lot cleaner setup. Um, and it's a little bit harder to find as far as being a full kit. Um, so it's not only going to make the car more unique, it's going to run better. Um, the turbo is going to spool better because it is a tubular manifold, unlike the log manifolds. You can push some power out of the log manifolds, but spool time, boost creep, things like that, it just, there's a lot that goes into it if you don't have a tubular manifold. Like I said, you can push some power out of a log manifold, and even the stock turbos, um, the big wheel stocker turbos is what we call them. They can make a lot of power on these cars too, but um, I want to do something really custom, unique. So this is the route I'm going. And another thing I didn't mention that's probably going to have to take is this manifold. So it's a really big bummer because I love, once this is all cleaned up and I shine it all up, it looks really, really good. But unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to get rid of this JMF aluminum sheet metal manifold. Obviously, the cold side pipe's got to go. Um, the reason for that is this kit, the Sidewinder kit, the engine had a stock manifold on the car and the throttle body, it was actually V-band with the vibrant clamp. So it's the same throttle body as this. This is not a stock throttle body. This is an MPX. The kit came with an MPX. The difference is they had to weld a vibrant V-band clamp onto it for the pipe because they v-bammed everything like i said so the stock manifold actually sits different than what this does so i'm going to try to leave this on here and see if i can't manipulate it but i'm afraid that i'm going to have to get rid of this and put my stock manifold back on it which pretty much the whole motor besides the engine the head and the transmission is going to be gutted out of this car so it's going to be a lot of work for one but I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna really try to keep this on here and see if I can't get that pipe. Because the way this is set up, 
this is a factory looking setup. Even though it's aftermarket parts, it's still factory looking. So factory coming from the throttle body to the cold side pipe, it goes straight down to the intercooler right here. And then your turbo setup, the hot side goes underneath the car and it goes all the way and it comes over here into the intercooler. So with this new turbo setup, it's different. It's backwards. So from when the turbo's sitting right here, the turbo cold side, which is really is the hot side because it's coming from the turbo, is actually going to dump right into here. And then the one from the throttle body is going to wrap around and go into this side. I don't know why they made it like that. Maybe because it was just easier, but I wish they would have pretty much kept it factory but this is how they did it so this is how we're gonna have to do it so that might have to go bye bye which kind of sucks but if we have to we have to i still have my factory intake manifold it just needs cleaned up it needs really it needs more it needs painted because the person that painted it like kind of like spray painted it so it doesn't look good so but yeah i'm gonna start working on it we're gonna first start taking the battery out of this car um, and then working on the turbo setup, we got to drain all the fluids, antifreeze got to get drained. Um, the car's been sent for a while, so it's going to be pretty easy to work on. We're going to get everything gutted, and then we're going to get things put back in it one by one. And the other thing that I don't have that this car is getting in the process of all this is a brand new fuel setup. I've already got an aftermarket boom of fuel oil. I've already got aftermarket bigger injectors on this car. So those are the only two things that are staying. Everything else as far as the feed from the back of the tank. The tank on these cars is back here. If you got to take this wheel off, it's actually back in this section of the car. So we got to drop all that. We got to get all the stock fuel lines out of it because it's going to be bigger fuel lines, fuel pressure regulator, bigger fuel pump with a modded canister. And that comes as a pretty much like a plug and play kit. So we got to get all the factory stuff for the fuel system as well. So it's going to change this whole engine up all again. And I was honestly going to try um, to paint the engine bay while I'm doing all this. Because since everything is technically having to come out of it, I was going to try to paint it all with it being just the motor and the transmission in the car, maybe drop it a little bit, get everything prepped, you know. I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up doing that or not. I would love to do that, but that's gonna extend this out probably for a couple weeks because I would have to gut everything out of here. Maybe just drop the engine and the subframe on this car um, or the cradle or whatever you wanna call it, drop it, you know, wrap it, lift the car up, get everything gutted out of this thing, suspension, all that stuff, all these little parts, the AC lines, everything's got to come out, sand it all down, take everything apart, fenders, bumpers, the bumpers got to come off anyways, but you got to take the fenders off of it, the hood off of it. I don't know if I'm going to go that far. I really um, just want to enjoy this car this summer because I haven't driven it in a long, long time. It's been sitting. I honestly haven't even really driven the new turbo that's on it right now. Um, I spent all that money and did all that all that work, put a new turbo on it to make the car spool better. And I pretty much drove it down the road and back, and that was all I've had time to do because the winter got really bad here, really cold, a lot of snow. So I just parked it. So I haven't even driven on this new tur this newer turbo that I have. So I really just want to get this thing back together with the new turbo setup. And just enjoy it this summer, even though the engine bay is not the same color of car and it's kind of beat up here and there. It's just a factory silver from, you know, Chrysler. So it's not really, doesn't go well with everything. But I think with deleting a lot of this stuff and cleaning a lot of the, the messy engine harness up in here, it's going to look a lot better just doing that with a new turbo kit on it and things like that. So I might, I might not, I don't know. I'll decide when I get the car tore apart and ready to go back together if I want to do all that extra work of prepping the bay. Um, because it would either go green 
or I would do like a just a black engine bay. I think black on a really clean setup in the engine bay just makes everything else shine, especially when things are like bright colors, like I have purple going on. I've got some polished aluminum stuff going on. So I think that would help out having a black engine bay, even though it doesn't go together with the, the green or the purple, um, the color scheme of the car, I think that would be awesome to have a black bay because if I do decide to paint this car another time, because I don't think I'm gonna get rid of it after I do, I've put a lot of money into this car lately, um, not even put into it yet, just by buying parts that I don't think I'm ever gonna sell it now, um, but it's gonna be like my showpiece as far as painting goes so down the road i might just repaint it different colors every few years repaint a different color or whatever i want to do with it so having a black engine bay i've kept that in mind with that because black pretty much goes with anything even though it's not the color of the car you know it's not body colored or anything like that it does go with pretty much every color that i could, could possibly want to paint this car so i'm keeping all that in mind in my head and um, just trying to get it to where I could just do whatever I want with it without having to take the motor out of it every time I want to repaint it. So just keeping all that in mind and, you know, trying to get it to where it's more presentable, even though it's, it looks pretty cool right now. It's really clean. The engine bay, it's not really clean. It's kind of a mess. So I want to just kind of clean that stuff up. So like I said, I'll decide, but I'm going to start tearing this thing down, drain the fluids out of it and get to rolling on this thing. And I'll pick you guys back up when I'm kind of through the process. I'm not gonna show you guys too much of it um, just cause it's a lot of boring stuff. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll walk you through this a little bit. So a couple hours later, we got the entire turbo kit, even the exhaust is off the car. Everything, I ended up taking the whole exhaust and the downpipe off at once easier that way just as long as i got that o2 housing off it came off pretty easy so got everything off right here it's a lot of little pieces and stuff but came out really really nice um so pretty much gonna stop right here for tonight um clean up a little bit and uh next we're gonna tackle getting this wiring harness unclipped and everything and then figuring out how much room I need and start mocking up like the exhaust manifold, put it on there, just see how everything's gonna fit the way it is right now besides the wiring harness. So that's the next up on the list. That's what it will continue on to tomorrow. But yeah, came out really pretty simple. Nothing really held me up too much, but just a lot of little stuff, but once I think once we get the wiring harness, the factory wiring harness out of here, um, it, I mean, it's all this right here. It comes back here and it clips and it goes all the way back in the cabin. Um, it goes like the fuse box part and all that stuff. So I think once we get all this out, um, it's going to look a lot better just by doing that. I'm going to end up taking the washer bottle out too because I don't, obviously I don't use it. It's just sitting here, so... Um, I need to get that taken out as well. Um, so tomorrow is just going to be clean up stuff. So I'll post some uh, video of it. Um, and yeah, that's what we'll leave off for tomorrow is get the wiring harness out, get the exhaust manifold just mocked up and see where we're at from there. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. There comes a time in everybody's life where you as a person um, start to change a little. Um, what I mean by that is the way you think, the way you act. Um, there's multiple different times in your life where this will happen. Um, first off, probably being a kid, you know, your dreams, your everything that you want to do um, as a kid. It's, you know, if you remember back when you were pretty much a child, you know, before you were a teenager, even if you were a teenager, your dreams were like, you know, I want to be a rocket scientist, or, you know, I want to go to the moon, you know. They're, they're big, big dreams. And then once you get a little bit older, you start narrowing those dreams down because you start to realize um, that sometimes they're not attainable, sometimes you can't get there. There's a lot of different factors that go into it. Um, and 
it does you kind of once you keep going getting older in my opinion um your mind and your body and the way you think um it just starts changing i don't really know the me the reason behind it or why but um, for any of you that are older um i'm just gonna kind of date myself here you know next month i'm gonna be 36 i'm still young um, but I've been through enough and I've done enough to know, you know, m bunch of my, bunch of my friends are way older than me, you know, 50, you know, 60 almost. I've got a couple of friends that are 60 years old. Um, my parents are pretty much getting to that age as well. Um, so I've been matured pretty much my whole life cause I've always had people around me that were much older than me. So I've realized this. From early on um, but I've always had dreams to do what I'm doing now um, as a kid not so much because I didn't know what was actually out there you know when I was a kid everything was basketball 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 I played basketball for majority of my childhood all the way up to high school and that was you know I lived eat breathed slept basketball i no joke when i was a kid i slept with the basketball every night you know every game that was on tv that's what my, my life was that and video games because that's all you pretty much had time to do as a kid being in school and stuff so i i lived that and then once i kind of got into like i said high schoolish um everything changed just because you know that's when everybody's starting to drive so when you get in your cars um, for me personally, I was um, held back a year, so I was um, a year or two older than everybody in my class, so I actually got my license um, a lot earlier, almost two years earlier than everybody else. And I had another friend in my class that was the same way as me, um, like I started driving at the end of seventh grade, so in middle school, um, I remember the time where I couldn't drive because I was fully driving when I was in eighth grade to school every day and no other eighth grader was and I remember that time where I had to park um, I couldn't park at the school at the time so I had to park down the street from the school and walk the rest of the way but it was pretty cool but the way I'm getting at is you know your mind starts um, changing as you get older on certain things and you know when I got into the cars and everything when I was younger, I mean, it hit me really hard because my generation, we grew up with the one and only, the Fast and the Furious. Um, a lot of people uh, pretty much count to that being their first, you know, step into the car scene. I had my grandpa, he actually built hot rods and street rods. So I was always around cars before that movie came out. But once that movie came out, I think my generation just grasped onto it really tightly because it was something that, especially where I'm at in the middle, you know, I'm in Indiana, so like that type of stuff wasn't really around. And being a kid at that age, I think I was like 11 or 12 when that movie came out. So it just, we weren't around to see that type of stuff, those cars. So like all that stuff was on the West Coast. And when that kind of came around, we saw that. Um, we were like, oh, you know, that we kind of like, gravitated towards that that tuner world um rather than like the muscle cars i had a couple of buddies that were still in the muscle cars and stuff and they were always making fun of the tuners and things like that but i kind of gravitated towards the tuner world just because i fell in love with like just the way the cars looked not only just like the body kits that were changed that would change a car drastically but like the paint jobs and that's when i got into painting um pretty heavily not just the regular paint jobs but like the really detail like the artwork the graphics the airbrushing that's when i started getting into the airbrushing and i actually started airbrushing way before i started painting um, just because it was a little bit easier to obtain i could always you know you can airbrush wherever painting you have to be in a booth space for all that other stuff so but where i'm getting to that is like now i'm to that point where you know when i first started having these ambitions of having my own place on my own, doing what I want all the time. Um, I'm now pretty much living that. Um, 
and like I said, I'm still kind of young, but I'm still, I, but I also realize that being 36, like I'm already lived half of my life pretty much. Seems like nowadays people are kind of not, they're not living as, as long as what like my grandparents did. You know, I had a grandma that lived to be over a hundred and you, and most people 70, it's like, the, you know, it's, if you live over 80, it's like a big deal around here. So, um, I do realize that life's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And that's probably a reason why you're, you know, you start thinking differently, you start doing different things because you start to realize like, Hey, like I've, I've done this, you know, I'm ready maybe for something else or do something a little bit different. And that's kind of why I love doing what I do and what I've done in the past because it's allowed me to learn this type of stuff. So um, if you're ever wondering why I kind of jump around, even though I want this channel to be nothing but paint, there's other things that have to go along with paint in order to get it to paint, if that makes sense. And it's not easy stuff. It's really hard work. And it might take me a lot longer than some people because you got to remember I'm still working a full-time job painting and I'm doing this when I come home. So like my videos are probably not going to come out as fast as what other people's. Um, but another point I'm trying to make is, you know, I've already been successful in my eyes. Um, the dream that I had as a teenager when I first started getting the cars and airbrushing and things like that, um, I've already pretty much achieved. Now, my meaning of success isn't by a dollar amount, by no means. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, um, I pretty much spent my whole 20s chasing money. And if you want some a wise opinion about that is um, understand that money is a tool, but don't make it your only thing that you're you're doing what you're doing. Um, for me personally, I made it my sole one thing that I wanted the most was money because in my eyes, money was going to get me the shop I wanted, the the tools that I needed, the cars that I wanted to work on, the cars that I wanted to to build that type of thing. So I used it as a tool, but I kind of took it to a really, really like an aggressive um, point to where I was like obsessed with it, um, chasing money all the time. And, you know, when you're 20, that's, you're in your twenties, that's what you're trying to do. Especially as a guy, I think we're built, obviously we're built to like provide and do all that other stuff. But, um, when you're 20, that's about when you're wanting to do, you know, you're trying to establish yourself. And to me, I've already done that. So, um, I'm to the point now where I am starting to realize all this and think about it a lot more. Um, cause like I said, I do this, I paint nonstop pretty much. Um, and to a lot of people, you might say, oh, you're going to burn yourself out or whatever. Um, or you're not going to be able to do it for long cause you're just ruining your body, breathing all this stuff in and things like that. And all that stuff's true. But, um, you just get to that point that you realize that there's more to life than everything that you've been doing and not to only focus on the money or the popularity or whatever you're trying to get because this right now the world's changed so much now that um, people are just chasing a number and whether it's money views, popularity, whatever it is, but my advice is don't solely just focus on that. Make sure you're happy doing what you're doing because if you're not happy doing what you're doing, then I'm going to tell you this right now, everything that you're doing is not worth the money, the time, just be chasing popularity. It's, it's not, I mean, that's flat out telling you guys the truth i mean like i said i'm not really i'm getting older and i you know you realize this stuff when you start to you know your mind starts to change and everything else like that so there's there even comes a time for like me like 
doing i love spraying like spraying was like my number one thing i've always wanted to be in a booth 24 7 now i've got that and i've had that for a long time and i've gotten really good at it um i have to when i'm usually at work you know i always have to play games in my head that gets me more excited about what i'm doing because not to brag or anything but when i'm spraying just a regular paint job at work because everything we do is collision stuff so it's like replacing panels you know blending it out clearing it whatever uh, mixing paint up all that stuff prepping it um, it's gotten to the point where I can almost if I could close my eyes and do it I could just because I'm, I've done it so many times that's just become almost too easy for me so I have to play these scenarios in my head of like playing these little games with myself to get me um, hyped about it now and which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's not really a good thing either, but it's not totally bad. But um, it's just, it's almost to the point of like, am I still happy doing what I'm doing? Because it's anymore, it's almost like burning myself out um, because what I want to focus on is doing what I love, right? That's what we all want to focus on. So when you get to the point of where you can do that, um, is it like, do you just abandon ship on the other thing and just do it, you know, go 100 at this other thing? Or do you kind of just work its way or do you just keep doing what you're doing, right? So that's kind of like, that's where I'm at right now. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm getting burnt out from painting. It's just that to the point where you're starting to, you know, you start to question yourself, you know, what else would I be happy with doing? this as much as this or doing it a little bit less and doing something else and that's why um, you might see the content change a little bit from painting to something else because you got to realize even though if you haven't watched the videos I've been working on um, that mini truck for the last four months that's a lot of time um, from me having the truck the first time to all the way this time I've got over 300 hours in that truck um, and a lot of you guys might be like, well, I don't see it, you know, whatever, but I've legitly tracked everything down. I've put, you know, pen to paper, kept track of everything. I've literally have like 330 hours in this truck and four, you know, so it's, I've gotten to the point of like realizing that, you know, is it, is it really worth it or is it not to that degree or am I just overthinking it type of thing, but it's always nice to be able to have different skills in the same um, field. Like, for instance, I can do the base coat, clear coat stuff at work, come home, lay out some graphics, and kind of get a fresh breath of air. So, even though it's the same thing almost, it's totally different. Or I can come home, and I can break out the airbrush and do a you know a mural or whatever I want to do with the airbrush, um, or I can come home and I can learn how you know my pinstriping skills, get better at that, or I can come home stuff like what we're doing now in this video, and that's one thing we're gonna get to real quick is it's been a day already. I've already worked on it and I didn't film anything, but being able to do stuff like this along with the painting stuff it gives me a break from everything that i've been doing so it's really nice to me you guys might not be able to pick that up on camera or on the videos but it kind of rejuvenates me if if that makes any sense to you guys so i want to stop rambling about that we're going to get into this because i've got a lot done even though it looks like a wired mess it kind of is but i've got a lot done since the last time you guys saw this i want to go over it with you real quick so i've pretty much gutted the entire front end all of the wiring is stripped everything in the front headlights all the wiring for that is pretty much stripped that's why you see all this the pcm i've got it all still plugged in that's why it's all hanging here but on this car you have your harness for your motor which i took off first and that's the custom harness that I've got now. Um, so I took that all the way off. And that's sitting over there. 
And then what I did was unhook the front of the harness, which is your headlights, your fog lights, all your accessories is on that harness. And then you got your harness that goes to the inside of the car, which is everything else, the fuse box and all that mess, your sensors, things like that. So it's a big harness, even though it's broken up in a little different areas. And then I'm on the point now of getting the rest of this out. So it runs inside the car after your fuse box. There's three plugs inside the car underneath the dash you gotta unplug. Those are unplugged and now I'm to the point where I've got this harness here that plugs in behind this bracket. And then there's another plug back there that I gotta get and this whole box of, of mess right here can come off the car. Now you might be asking me why I'm doing this well, I'm to the point where I'm, um, I did pretty much, I did the engine harness. I took off the, had to take off the, a, the AC in the car had to come out because the way this kit's made, it hit the pump at the bottom. So the pump had to come off for it to fit. So unfortunately we had to delete AC in this car. Not really a big deal because I don't really daily drive it, but it does kind of suck because sometimes, you know, I, I did use it in the summertime a little bit which made it nice, um, but for in order for this kit to fit, we had to take that AC pump, and I've got it all pretty much sitting right here, condenser and everything, full AC system, off the car. So I realized when I was doing that, that this engine bay is a lot worse than what I thought. So I am to the point of just taking everything out and painting the bay is pretty much what i'm getting at so like i said i'm to the point where getting this fuse box harness out and i have to do this anyways to get the turbo because i've mounted up the kit i've mounted up the 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 actual manifold the manifold sits right here and the turbo hangs down so this bracket this bracket is part of the transmission bracket for the car and this that the, these parts that hang out with these little pins sticking out of it these studs they are for the battery tray and they're only for the battery tray this one and this piece back here have to get cut so i need to cut this anyways for that turbo because that turbo hangs down like right down here so this one's definitely in the way and with the exhaust and everything this little pin right here has got to get shaved off so i'm just going to cut it right here at this angle get rid of that that will allow me to get this harness unpinned because you actually have to take this bracket off to get this harness unpinned from this box down here and that's for your abs and all that and you know that's for all that stuff down there so i've got to do it anyway so that's what i'm going to do now and i'm going to cut this one off just because i'm cutting this one off i'm just going to cut it off so i've got my cutoff wheel kind of like a new disc used disc here so i'm going to go ahead and cut that off and get the rest of this harness out and then we're going to what we're going to do from there is we're going to mock up the manifold again and i'll show you guys what it looks like and i might just stick the turbo on it to hang it off just to see um, and then after that i have to go through and obviously get like the grounds i really re need to redo these ground wires they're not really in the best of shape. I might just buy some more ground and make my stuff my own. So that's gotta come off. Um, I'm trying to do this with the motor kind of in it, but not necessarily in it. In it. I'm gonna try to jack the car up, lower the motor down, gives me enough room to get around everything, tape up the motor itself from getting overspray all over it. And I gotta figure out how to take off all this brakes, all the hydraulic line for the clutch, brake lines, all that stuff's gotta come out. Um, the fuel line, I have not taken it out yet. I'm still waiting on my fuel kit to get here. So this has gotta get taken off anyway. So that factory fuel line that's running back here has gotta come out. Um, so I'll take that whole thing out too while I'm doing this. So the engine bay itself is gonna get cleaned up just by having to put this kit on because it's gonna it's gonna i'm gonna have to delete a lot of stuff 
Um, and then this, the, the cooling going from the heater core all the way to the front of the motor, I gotta figure out if the exhaust is gonna fit without hitting it and all that stuff because it is a hood dump. I've got everything pretty much gutted from the cow, but they come out, I've already got it pretty much marked. It comes out right here at this section and it kind of goes at an angle. So I gotta mock it up once again, once I get all this out, get the bracket cut. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I'll come back to you guys when I'm ready. So after about an hour and a half of fighting, um, I got the harness out. The harness in these cars, it goes all the way inside the cabin and it wraps around down here. And there's a bunch of little things down here that plug in like the power steering and all the little stuff right down there. So I ended up pulling the module for the ABS um, and then the master cylinder for the brakes. Pulled that all out. Once I got that out, I was able to get to everything pretty easily. And then there's a couple more plugs inside the car that needed to be unplugged and I pulled it all out. It's just a wiring mess that needs cleaned up. But that'll be one of the last things I do is go through here and clean all this up and make it look pretty again. So got all that out. So now you can really see how much that cleans everything up. Obviously it's gotta go back in the same spot, but the um, only thing really left are these boost lines. Uh, or vacuum lines. This is the vacuum line for the intake manifold. It goes on something like this right here. It runs to your uh, um, block valve as well. And then this is just the hood hood latch cable. And then I went ahead and disconnected these from the firewall for the heater core. Um, I'll end up taking those off at some point um, and figuring out how to route those without this big old tubing in the way. If I can get rid of this tubing and just use hose from all the way to the front to the back, um, that'll be a lot more easier because I can push it wherever it needs to get pushed. Um, these make it really, really hard because they don't really move because they're welded together. Um, so that's the game plan on that, but I'm going to throw on the manifold and get that mocked up and see how well. I just kind of cut this off a little bit. Everything was still in the way, so I just cut it the way I needed to get those out. So I'll go through there and clean these up. This bracket will eventually come out of the car and get painted as well to clean all that up as well. So I'm trying to do as much as I can with the motor in the car. And then when I'm ready to do something with the motor and get it, to where I can actually paint around it and get everything out. Um, that'll be the very last thing. And then obviously I'll prep everything. The towers, strut towers will have to at least go down um, so I can get paint all the way around there. And then the brake lines, all these brake lines back here, um, I'm going to try to find some steer, steel braid lines, get rid of these crappy things because some of them are starting to corrode and when that happens they start leaking and pressure and it just they ended up just rotting out really quick after they start crowding so i'm gonna find a steel braided line kit somewhere and just redo all that stuff when i go back to building it it'll look better uh, this just is a mess to me so um and obviously you still got the fuel line system to go through and get all that out so once i think the brake lines are out um this heater core water lines are um, out and fixed and then the fuel line everything back there will be pretty much cleaned up obviously the booster it needs to come out as well that gets bolted from the inside of the car so that'll be one of the last things and then yeah that's pretty much it so i'm gonna throw on this manifold show you guys what it looks like so here's with the manifold on i just got a couple nuts it's not fully on it's just a couple nuts holding on but you could tell exactly where that turbo is gonna sit. Um, obviously the wastegate, it gets really, really close to here. So it needs to be as clean and cleaned up as possible for this setup to run properly. And it looks like it's got enough room for the heater core hoses. Um, I'm still gonna delete this just because, 
by the time you have the turbo and that that exhaust pipe is going to be about right here so it's going to be like right in the way of this line right here so um, even though it's heat wrapped and all that stuff i still want to get it to where it's pretty much out of the way and i don't ever have to worry about it getting hot and burning a hole through it or anything like that um, so i'm going to investigate this a little bit more on, as far as what needs to happen um, the last i did this about 10 years ago um, same sidewinder setup look but the manifolds were a little bit different the turbo was actually sitting on top rather than underneath the manifold um, and you had to reroute those heater core lines um, you actually had to run them underneath the transmission and come back over so I, I everything had to get pretty much extended um, and I kind of forget how I did that so I'm gonna have to look at this some more and figure that out but other than that it's coming along really really nicely um, I think once I get those few things out and get everything mocked up um, that'll tell me exactly if it'll work or not and obviously I got to cut the hole in the cowl panel for the um, exhaust exit and wastegate exit because they both come through the, the hood cowl once I get it all pretty much somewhat bolted up as far as the exhaust side and the turbo side of the things um, then I can tear it all back apart and start getting this motor out of the way and all that stuff so um, not much I would say about another two or three days worth of work of getting things out and get it all rearranged and everything before I can start actually prepping it to where it's ready for paint the fender I take the fenders off the car too uh, which means I'll probably take the hood off as well because I want underneath here even though I painted it I think I back taped it down here there's a second panel beyond this fender I think I back taped it when I did the car originally because everything was off the car so I want to take the fenders off again that way I can just paint everything as nice as I can front core support will no longer be black unless I choose to paint black I don't know exactly what colors I want to do um, because I'm going to keep this car for a very long time I don't plan on selling it so maybe you guys can help me with this um, so with that in mind and me being a painter I'm probably going to paint this car a few more times of me owning it so I need to pick out a color for the engine bay that's going to be um, pretty much going that will go well with any other color because I won't be painting it just a regular silver or whatever. It's going to always got to have like graphics or a loud color. So um, I'm thinking black on the engine bay, just make it really nice and really slicked out like the rest of the car. That way, if I do paint it like a pink or something, or, you know, I'm just throwing out ideas, but black will always match that way. Every time I paint the engine bay or every time I paint the car, I don't have to paint the engine bay. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I think of colors to go with, even though I would love to paint the engine bay green, just like this sublime custom sublime green. I got it. If that whole engine bay was all that green and everything was like purple and, you know, polished out, that would look really sick. But if I go and paint the car a purple or I mean, purple would go good. But if I painted a car or something else, that engine bay green might not go well with if you know if you understand what i'm talking about i'm trying to just keep it all in the back of my mind um but i might just say screw it and paint it sublime green um so i don't know but yeah if you got to comment down below what you guys think um the color should be for the engine bay i'm going to go ahead and stop this video here um the rest of the work is pretty much boring stuff until i get it fully mocked up then i'll pick up the camera again and we'll start start the process of getting it all prepped out the way it needs to be for paint so appreciate you guys watching hope you guys learned a little bit of something in this video if not oh well you know well there's gonna be another one there's gonna be more like i said there's gonna be more videos of learning this is just something to break the monotony of me painting for the last four months on somebody's vehicle 
this just helps me break it up and do something a little bit different. So appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on the next one.